Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Fool's Apprentice. Really excited today. We are doing another single tarot card study. Uh, I have Angie here. Hi, Angie. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I love your smile. Thank you so much. It's so I, it's genuine because I'm just so happy to be here. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. Now, for me, it's nine o'clock in the evening. What time is it for you? It's 10 a.m. over here. I'm from the Philippines, so I'm based in the Philippines. Yeah, so I'm so thankful you accommodated my time. Different. Oh, yes. you. Everybody out there is doing me a huge uh, favor and coming on so I could finish this huge goal of mine. So I will always go out of my way. I haven't been perfect. I've had some mistakes with some people <laughs> in time and missing appointments, but I'm really working hard to get, try to get it right. So... Tell us a little bit about yourself, any social media, anything that's going sure. on that's what we're talking about. So my name's Angie. I am mostly on Instagram under a cup of tarot. I just started posting on YouTube, so it's also a cup of tarot. Um, but I've been doing tarot since mid-2021, so okay. pretty much a beginner. Yeah, I'm still a beginner, I would yeah. think so. Awesome, awesome. And... Um, so we are doing the strength card. Do you feel pretty comfortable with the strength card? One of my favorite cards. Is it's it? the card that I look at as a make or break for picking up a tarot deck. Yeah. Oh, very cool. And of course, I've asked people for their favorite cards and you picked this one. So I'm using the Neil Ryder. People are going to get so sick and tired of me mentioning the Neil Ryder. What do you have for your base? I have for my favorite one. No, no, no. The no Oh no! I it's okay. It. <laughs> so I don't own an RWS deck, so I you don't have. Oh. Okay. All right. Well, then we yeah. will play on ours. Or yes. Mine. Yeah. We'll, we'll share it. Yeah. Um. So tell me, what what do you think about the strength card? What does it mean for you? How does it play out in the reading? So when I was learning tarot, all the resources would reference the RWS. So I'm familiar with the imagery. I just never had the traditional RWS deck. And for me, I struggled with it first because I thought strength, like what does this mean? Is it physical? I automatically went to like physical strength or showing up and overpowering, you know, that kind of overpowering strength. Like even if it's not physical, you show up like a boss. Like you're just like, all right, you get to do this. And I'm gonna I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I was learning more about it and it kept talking yeah. about internal strength. And I'm like, but, but there's a lion. So I thought that that would be more. So I, I was, it was hard for me to understand the deeper meaning at first. Okay. Yes. And so what does that mean for you now? Oh gosh. Well, now it's kind of, it, it's very much like that lion symbolizes my, Let's say my shadow self, you know, oh, in a way. That's yeah. A new, that's a new look at the line I've never heard of. Yeah, because I feel like it's my my raw passion, um, the things maybe that I'm sh ashamed about, mm. and sometimes the things that I would look at and consider like this is not suitable for other people's gaze. You know, like this is just me, the things I hide about myself, um, but now it's come to be this thing where it's like, okay, how do I integrate that? How do I not necessarily tame it? Because I don't, I don't feel comfortable taming parts of myself. It's more, there is an appropriate outlet for that. And there is an appropriate outlet to be more measured. And you need both. Right. So there's a sense of balance. Yes, yes. I agree with you 100%. Yeah. That's wonderful. I love that. For me, um, the strength card uh, really represents that inner strength that you have to be able to manage those emotions. I, I, I will tell you, when I think of, I always have this one thing that I think of that, re, that really gets me really grounded with the, the strength card, and that is the the battle of a lifetime for me. Oh my God, I'm going to actually say this on camera. Uh, lust. When I think of lust, it is an extremely visceral, animalistic, powerful emotion that can 
come over me. And I have had to learn through my lifetime how to, you know, find a balance with managing yeah. it within so it doesn't really show out where I don't look like a creep. Yeah, <laughs> I hear you. And so when I think of the strength card and I'm struggling with it, I always go back to the base of like, what is the most animal, animalistic, visceral feeling that I have? And it reminds me of that inner strength that I need to have that sense of mastery over my emotions, uh, yeah. which leads to the mastery of my inner thoughts and my feelings and my actions. And so then it's the, the onion starts to, uh, un, I get to peel all those layers back. Um, really, when, uh, so that really it's about the inner strength that one has. And mm -hmm. it, I think it it's different based on where you, it, it's applied in a reading and in part of your life. So so It'll look one way in relationships, one way within your career, one way spiritually. So it, it doesn't really encompass one thing. Mm. I tend to have a, uh, if it comes up with relationships, then I have a, at 50, oh my God, I'm going to be 55 coming up in a few weeks. You don't at, look it. <laughs> thank you. At 55, my mask mm over relationships and what I want, what I don't want, how my emotions come up and how they dictate behaviors. I, I'm really good at that. When it comes to, let's say, a uh, career, I'm in a brand new career. I'm now a therapist. I used to be a sign language interpreter, I'm now the therapist. So my mastery uh, with mm -hmm. career is at a different level. I wouldn't say I have that much knowledge, experience, and wisdom that I utilize to manage all of that that goes on with fear yeah. and anxiety imposter syndrome all that kind of stuff does that make sense absolutely and i love how you brought in lust as like the very visceral first impact in the strength card because i can totally relate to that and i don't know how how deep we're gonna get right but um <laughs> that's something that i i struggle with um i have some history that i won't get into but yeah. i talk about it a lot on my ig um but it's been like a, a reclaiming of that as a strength and how sensuality and sexuality can be sacred and not shameful and can yeah. be strong. And it's oh my I God, I love it. You know, we should have a conversation or I should have a conversation with somebody just on lust and the strength card. That would be an interesting conversation to have. Like maybe isn't it, people. Uh, isn't it um, the strength card is lust in the thought? Isn't that right? I'm not sure. I, I, I don't know very much about the thoughts at all. I don't I but I'm I think that's the equivalent of it in Is the it? in the yeah. Interesting. So yeah. do you have anything with the symbols? Like does a line mean anything? Does her white robe anything mean to you? Mm. So I as I was learning tarot, I did get very nerdy about it and I was like, okay, you know, the pictorial key and all this stuff. And um it, it talks a lot about like religious iconography actually mm. like there's references to you know christians in rome and um those when they would throw them into the lion's den or or have them fight lions and there was a lot of that um I, for me that's the lion that's the symbology of the lion where it's kind of like okay you are leaning on something divine and i don't say divine is like a religious thing right but you're ascribing to some kind of higher power either within yourself or outside of yourself that is helping you close the jaws of the lion okay. so that's kind of the, the symbology that i see there yes yeah, so, so for the lion for me it is all the things that i need to face and mm. master or overcome or find a way to balance in my life. It could be emotions, it could be thoughts, it could be trauma, it could be insecurities, it could be life's challenges, it could be life itself. You know, yeah. uh, for some people, life can be very, very overwhelming, you know? And some of us are born in different circumstances where some of us, life looks wonderful, but it has their own challenges. And then there's others, who lives look really hard and like I you can't even imagine, but it has its own challenges. Uh, yeah. And so it's really, a, that's what the line represents. The thing that I need to face with courage, strength, compassion, and understanding. Yeah. 
So it's not all broad, you know, a brawn. It's not all brawn that you're going to use. Um, any ideas on the infinity symbol for you? The infinity symbol for me, not so much. I'm more, um, I'm more relate to the, the flowers that are around the woman or the man, depending on the, the deck and the lion. Mm -hmm. So what you were saying about not having it be all brawn, because that, that's kind of like the leash, right? Like that's kind of the leash that surrounds the lion and is attached to the person and it's flowers and it's real soft energy. And it's very much like, it's almost this visual of like taming the wild beast with music and with kindness mm. instead of wrestling them into submission, which is I think yeah. our go to when we're faced with something that we don't like. We want to wrestle it into submission instead of being like, can I understand you? Can I be compassionate? You know? Now, I will yeah. say mm -hmm. that, that this is internal strength. External strength is actually th this chariot. Ah, because yes. Because you're in charge of having to yes. th dictate where this chariot's going to go. You you are controlling these two things up front and, and telling them, move, stop, turn left, turn right. You, you have absolute physical control. Here, mm. it's internal control. So true. And so funny that you mentioned that as well. It just made it pop in my mind. You know how they talk about the three lines of the tarot? and how the first line in the major arcana is your personal power. Like you're discovering your personal power and it ends with the chariot. It ends with you directing and driving, you know, your life forward. And then the second line is all about internal power and it starts with strength. And it made so much more sense to me when I realized that strength was actually in the early, earlier decks called fortitude instead mm. of strength. And that, that's a good word. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because yes, there are those three different um, yes. parts of the the tarot. There was a oh my god, uh, Lockstock Radio. I think it's what it's called. It's a podcast. He's amazing. Ooh. He separates them as, if I remember correctly, childhood, adolescence, and adulthood. That's how That's he awesome. separates the three, and I and I really love that. I really do. So. <clears throat> When you look at this in reverse, do you do you read reverse mm -hmm. reversals? You don't read reversals? I don't usually read reversals, but it, it depends on like the context as far as the situation. Mm -hmm. And if I'm doing a spread, what question did I ask? That's how I'll I'll read the energy in reverse. Yes, or... I'm the exact same way, because I won't read reversals. I just don't like the way it looks. But yes. I do have the shadow side, the reversal side meaning if it comes up. What, what does yeah. that look like for you? For me, it's kind of um, where are you losing or where are you giving up agency? That, that's what it's like. Like I you're love giving that. up your personal power, right? Like, because if it's inner strength, it's not necessarily that um, you've lost something or you've lost a battle, but it's more to me like, where, where am I not even showing up to fight for a battle, you know? Where have I just said, all right, I, I give up, I, I'm defeated. And and I always think that I always have a choice in a situation, mm -hmm. not in everything, mm -hmm. but there's always something I can do for myself, if not to change the situation, but, you know, for myself in that situation. Yeah. So that's how I always see the reverse of I, that. I, 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 kind of, I kind of see it as like, imposter syndrome, internal fears, self-doubt, not being able to control, um, let's say, emotions like anger, like really, yeah. you're, you're very resentful and it's eating you mm. side out, yes. showing up in this situation. It's about running away from, from what you need to face. So let's say you're in a bad relationship and you know it's bad, but you're trying, you're, you're turning blind yeah. off you know, because you're afraid, you don't want to lose everything, you don't want to have to start over, all that kind of stuff. That's the kind of reversals for me. Or staying at a job for too long where, you know, you should have left because you're yeah. you're afraid to step out mm -hmm. and start over or leaving a job because you don't know if you'll find another one or make as much money, all that kind of stuff. That's how I see the reversal. Um, That's so insightful because it's like it carries so many layers of life, you, you know, know, where it's 
two years ago i didn't have this two years ago i was like okay she's in, she's in charge of an animal you know, I know. it's strong <laughs> and now there is a lot more nuance there is a lot more yeah. nuance. and what happens is when i have these conversations with people all of a sudden mm -hmm. it's like this flower is starting to blossom more and more it's like yeah. adding it's like adding a miracle grow to a plant all of a sudden very quickly so i love having these conversations because it really makes me think on the spot ways i probably wouldn't have and you and we trigger each other i think in those exactly the and back I, and forth yeah so to be honest that is another part i decided to do this series is i it would force me to start talking about it and making it more personal and looking at different uh, perspectives on the car hearing somebody else's perspective so it, it, it's a benefit for me it's just not about bringing everybody together for me. so you had showed your favorite strength car Did. let me see Did. <laughs> so this is from the lubanko this is the strength card Ooh, let me just try to get that in frame there you go yeah it, it's pretty raw isn't it it's, it's just very so... visceral yes yeah so i don't know how to do it. i'll keep it over here i guess da -da -da -da. no you, it's okay you don't have to show it everybody saw it <laughs> all right so tell, so what, we... what is it about that card that really resonates with you so i i relating to what you said about lust and you know all that mm. stuff for me that is an area where i have given away like sensuality sexuality that's an area where i've given away a lot of my personal power mm. so when i saw this card okay first of all you have the lion is kind of like half human half lion right. and then there's all this body hair on both the lion and the figure that's embracing him mm -hmm. or her or you know it's very androgynous it's very gender neutral um and to me i love how gritty it is i okay. i love how it's exactly that it's like taming the beast inside you through kindness and compassion mm -hmm. and the fact that you have all this which let's face it you know body hair is not typically depicted in most of the tarot decks okay. i love that it's all there because it feels real it feels raw it feels like this is who i show up as this is me unfiltered you know oh and yeah like i i love that strength card she's just lightly resting her hands on this being's head and they're embracing so I, I really love that symbology of I am embracing the parts of myself that are screaming for attention. So I have, the, I have the Labanko as well. And when, as you're showing it, describing it, I'm actually seeing, um, yeah. and I've never had this perspective, is in that card, she's one in the same with the lion. Yes. yes. So it's, yeah, because, you know, like we were talking about our inner feelings, our thoughts. It's, you know, we are one in yep. the same with the line so i like that exactly it's like the part that i'm so ashamed of that i don't want to show because it's mm -hmm. too in your face maybe and yeah. raw but i need it all right i so excited to see your favorite really <laughs> love this one this one is from the tarot of the abyss it's a mass market oh, oh yeah i don't have that one but i've always been interested let me tell you that oh, one my. is oh, come on how can you not that is so beautiful it is extremely wow. i love with how intimate it feels like with lust lust is a very intimate feeling it's yeah. something that's very private to ourselves that we don't show to the most people in the world in our lives in our lifetime so i, I can't believe our whole conversations come up about lust. but what i love about I think it's so yeah. Uh, what I love about this, it's this, um, this calmness, this sense of this, it, this, it, it reminds, this card reminds me of how I'm supposed to approach anything mm -hmm. I find challenging. Because if I come up with too much energy, I'm not going to yeah. be focused. This, t this card tells me I need to be grounded. I need yeah. to be serious about what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. so that all the potential necessary to master what it is that I'm going to be dealing with and that mm. eventually we will work as a team because I see this card as a team yes. player. Yes. I kind of love how it looks like 
she's calling the lion out of the darkness almost. Oh, I it, love that. Yeah, like it's it's just the head that's peeking through, but you see hints of the body in the back. Mm -hmm. And she's so gentle with the lion as well. And he's got this serene kind of, you know, expression. So I, I really like that. What I also like about them is that they're approachable, but you also really know that they're not the kind of people that you want to mess with. <laughs> Things can yep. turn very quickly. Yes, I like they can that. Turn on you very quickly. So that that, and I've seen people actually with this particular deck, they'll color certain uh, a section mm -hmm. of, like they they might just color the the yellow in the in the main, or they might just that color the cloak in red or whatever color, and that's all they do, and they'll do that with all the cards. Wow, that's, you should that's look that. You, you should look that up. It's it's some people do something Absolutely. just using pencil and color. Um. Oh my God! Thank you so much for coming on and discussing this. Thank you so much for having me, and it it really is so much fun to just chat with fellow tarot lovers about how they see things. It's amazing. I love it. I mean, I am so happy that this idea came because. The goal is to meet 78 different people. That's the goal. I mean, and then to create a, um, and what I would really like to do, I, I thought of it for maybe everybody will do it, is actually create your own guidebook based on everybody's different perspectives on it. And then you have this universal community tarot guidebook. Wouldn't that be oh, amazing? Really, that would be amazing. I really love that. I think you should definitely do it. Definitely. Oh, I I actually bought a book that I do it for. <gasps> ah. But again, thank you so much. I really appreciate your thank time. You. Everybody, thank you so much. My name is Benny, and I am the Fool's Apprentice. And until next time, have a great day. Bye.